<laughs> this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience. Welcome to the Geese Spot Podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love sound bites. Join us for conversations around sex, spirit, and all things self-care. All things self-care. All things self-care. This is a journey into sound. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. You are a G-Spot Podcast with Katie Silcash. Hey, beautiful ladies and a few dudes. <laughs> Most of our listeners are ladies, what can I say? And then there's the, there are these amazing guys that are somehow just inexplicably drawn to the geese spot. I, I don't know why that could be. What could that be? You know, guys, we're really excited about a, a little bit of changes going on as always, right? Everything's always changing. We are working towards integrating men. Yes. Into our programs. Um, so look, look out for that. And, uh, we're going to be teaching in our level two Ayurveda school, um, Ayurveda for men and men's issues and men's concerns, because guys, men, men's, men's got some, some concerns lately, right? Um, so I'm excited about that. Check out our Ayurveda school. Level one starts January, 2020. We're already filling up and we do have a limit on how many ladies we can take, and um, there's a lot of interest. So if you know that Ayurveda school is something that's been calling to you, and uh, you're just sort of waiting, um, don't wait. Get in now and check us out. We are offering up a free four-hour mini course with me on what is Divine Feminine Ayurveda what is Ayurveda in general, and, and what are we doing over here at Shakti School? So the link for that's in the show notes. Ayurveda School starts level one, 2020, January. Get your booty in. And our amazing sponsor, Apothecary, where you can access Mother Nature's Pharmacy, because that's what it's all about. Ditch the quick fixes, guys. We're, tre- we're seeking true wealth here. And that's wealth spelled W-E-L-L-T-H. Um, I love Apothecary because they offer natural plant-based solutions that are incredible herbal mixtures that really support our brain and our balance and our beauty and our body. And so they, they've been a sponsor of the show for uh, about a year now. We love them. Um, especially love the Beginner's Essentials Kit. It's got Follow Your Gut, Slay All Day, and Hater Sates Photoshopped. And all of those are full of really great adaptogenic herbs, which those herbs are magic. What they can do is go into your body and adapt to whatever it is that your little being needs. So as always, we've got Apothecary in the show notes. Check them out. Plus, I, I can't tire of saying this. Nothing makes me happier than to send women to women business. Nothing makes me happier than supporting women who are doing their thing and dreaming their dreams and making it happen. So um, we love them. Check out Apothecary, guys. And now on to the show, which is, I'm so, I'm so excited about, I'm always excited to talk to you guys, but today we're talking about something really important and that's pooforia. If you haven't read my book, then you don't know about pooforia. So let me introduce you to pooforia. Pooforia is that feeling that you get after you've taken, yes, I'm going to say it, that perfect poo. Um, And somebody was telling me in one of our live events, they're like, oh my gosh, poo is like the most disgusting word. Can you just say poop? (laughs) And I was like, I kind of don't like that word. Um... So, yeah, you may not like the word. My little nephew, Jack, he has recently discovered the poop emoji. And he thinks that poop is the funniest thing in the world. And he likes to answer questions with the word poop that have nothing to do, of course, with that word. And so it takes us esoterically to the 
phenomenon of the perfect poo and pooforia as something that is so innate in the human experience. And it's something that we don't like to talk about. We'd rather not admit, but we all do it. And guess what? That's a good thing. If you don't do it, that's definitely going to be starting some problems in your system. So today we're talking about poop. What does Ayurveda stay, say about the perfect stool? Um, the perfect pooforic experience. And I want to preface this by saying perfection doesn't exist, right? Maybe, maybe, but like your body is always adapting and changing. Your body does something called fierce antidoting. And so if you've eaten too much spicy food, guess what? Your body's going to start to create more looser stools, right? To fiercely antidote that. So, um, I'm a big fan of understanding how the body detoxes and how the body shifts out of fight or flight states. And as we move out of frozen states and, and more fighty states, our, um, our stools will shift and change. And so I, I just want to preface this whole talk on perfection by saying that if your stools aren't perfect, that's okay. And our, our stools are always changing in accordance with the weather, in accordance with what you ate, in accordance with what, what's going on in your hormones, in accordance with the moon and the tides, and in accordance with where you are on your menstrual cycle, in accordance with the emotions that you felt that day, on and on and on, okay? So your stools are going to be changeable. That said, there are some standards and some like hallmarks of the perfect poo that we can aspire to, that we can reach towards, that we can kind of see as, oh, when my stools are more like this, I'm more in a place of homeostasis. Um, and so what that looks like is that you have at least one complete elimination in the morning. One elimination in the morning. I can't tell you how many people I've met with who are like, I'll ask, like, how's your elimination? And they'll say, oh, yeah, no, fine. It's normal. And I'll have to dig in, you know, and I'm like, well, what does normal mean? Like, like, tell me, like, what, how often do you go? And then you find out that they go every other day or every third day or once a week. And if that's you, ain't no shame in that. But mama, that ain't normal. So at least one complete elimination in the morning. It should have kind of a brown color and sort of a banana like shape. It doesn't stick to the sides of the toilet. Um, it's easy to wipe and you're not getting a ton of like messiness. Um, the smell of it is, you kind of know it when you smell it. It's sort of, sm it doesn't smell bad. There's not a strong odor of any particular food or anything gross. It almost smells like um, clean, cleanly digested food is how I would describe it. Um, and no matter what's going on, you know, you kind of see, see that like you can eat different things, but the stool has a similar consistency each day. I know that's not me every day. So what does imbalanced poo look like? If you, if you have... Um, looser stools that are liquidy, definitely, or even just on the oily side. If you ever see any mucus, um, definitely green or yellow coloring. Um, sometimes you can get uh, red coloring if you've eaten beets, so just be aware of that. That's not blood. But if you do see blood in your stool, you're, you're going to want to connect with a, with a doctor around that. That's definitely a sign that something's off. Um, black yeah, not a good color to have. So green, yellow, black, and uh, anything red that's not beets, you, you definitely want to contact someone around that. Um, undigested food in our stool is really common, and it's a sign that our digestive capacity, our digestive me metabolic absorptive um, fire is low or imbalanced or, or high. So um, undigested food in the stool is a, an issue and um one of the things i've found with me like i'm like oh my god you know like i'm not assimilating my food and what i've realized is actually i'm not chewing my food so well enough so the first thing we can do for good digestion well not the first but one of the most important things we can do is really chew our food to an even consistency 
And OMG, that really takes work and concentration initially. Um, and those teeth are going, you know, you don't have teeth in your stomach or your intestines. And so that the teeth, that mastication is what starts to break down the food, that first line of breaking down. So different body types, vata, pitta, and kapha, are going to have different experiences of pooforia. And that's something that I don't think gets spoken about in our little Ayurveda world or in our wellness world enough, especially not in the general nutrition, fitness, and wellness world. It, it really doesn't get discussed at all. Different mind-body types, of course, we know as the three doshas, have different stools. And that was like such a liberating thing for me as a pitta, right, a pitta vata, I'm going to have different looking stools than a pitta kapha or a kapha or a pure vata. So let's talk about what that looks like. A normal vata, when she is imbalanced, will have normal vata stools. And what that looks like is she's going to go once a day, usually, within the first maybe like two, three, max four hours of waking up. They'll be more on the firm side. They're going to be a little bit darker brown in um, color, but she's going to have the feeling that she's completely eliminated. Um, and she's not going to have a, a lot of odor at all. What does that normal pitta pooforia look like? It looks a little different. That person's going to kind of go to the bathroom a little earlier. When she first wakes up, it's going to be within that first hour. And typically, pitta people are going to go twice a day when they're in balance. And I, I know a lot of pitta people who go after lunch. Um, if I've seen, actually, very pitta people even go three times a day. It's like they eat a meal and they go to the bathroom. It's firm, but when a pitta, a pitta stools are going to be looser than anyone else's. So it will be firm, but then as you flush, like it'll break up really, really easily. Pittas usually have a little bit of a lighter color than vata. It'll be more like brownie yellow. And um, out of all of the three doshas, pitta's going to be the one that you can kind of smell the most. It shouldn't smell yucky. It will just smell stronger than the other three. Uh, excuse me, two. What is that normal kapha person going to have in their prophoric experience? They're going to, you know, be regular and have a complete elimination They'll go about once a day um, within the first, you know, couple hours of waking up. Um, the thing that makes kaffas different is like they're going to have more quantity than anybody else. And these these kaffa people, which I've heard about in um, Ayurvedic mythology, I don't meet a, I don't hang out with a ton of like pure kaffa people. I wish, I wish I would. If you're a pure kaffa, come be my friend. Because kapha people are the best, right? They're, they're, their stools smell sweet. Yes, sweet. Sweet or odorless. Um, and they'll have a little bit of a lighter brown color. Okay, guys, like what does it look like when things go awry? And this can happen irrespective of your body type. You can be a kapha and get a vata imbalance. You can be a pitta and have a kapha imbalance. Any of us can have imbalance in our stools. What does it look like when we eliminate and we have a vata imbalance? Oh, this is, this is the worst. If you're out there and you have a vata imbalance in your stool, girlfriend, you need to join Ayurveda school. I mean it. It's going to be the best three grand year long program. Best three grand you've ever spent in your life because we're going to help you out. Life is not worth living if you are not eliminating. Maybe that's a phrase we need to put on a t-shirt. Vata stools are the worst. They, they're dry. They're hard. I remember my first Ayurveda teacher, A.G. Mohan, he would say, Vata, vata stools are dry and hard like goat pellets. <laughs> like goat pellets. Um, just little, if you've ever had like a rabbit and you've seen their, uh, feces, they're just like these little tiny balls, scanty little pellets, no bueno. Okay. You have that feeling where you, you're constipated. You do not go once a day 
And when you do go, there's just this sense of like, I didn't eliminate fully. It's the worst feeling. It's not pooforia. And, you know, vata is um, defined by irregularity. So, so if you are like, one day I'm loose stools, one day I'm constipated, one day I'm this, one day I'm that. Inconsistency is a hallmark of vata. Um, and, and then you get a little bit more gas and uh, that's not fun. What does imbalanced pitta elimination look like? Well, it looks like heat. It looks like burning. It looks like looser stools. It looks like maybe diarrhea if it's really bad. It looks like you're going to the bathroom more than a couple times a day. And I've seen this with people where they have chronic inflammation and they're just kind of going all day long. And that would be an indication of a more serious chronic condition. Um, IBS, Crohn's, that kind of stuff, you need to seek the advice of a practitioner, Ayurvedic, Chinese, Western, whatever your pleasure, but those are signs of some more chronic issues. Uh, you got a bad smell going on. You got bloating, you've got belching, and that feeling that is just heated. What does imbalanced kapha look like? It looks like mucus, it looks like oiliness and heaviness in your stool. And, um, it can be kind of hard to, to clean off your toilet. Uh, it may be more of a paler color because your liver is not functioning right and you're getting, uh, like, liver is the part of our body that makes that bile color or at least a part of the, the process of that. And so you get a little bit more of that pale color. All right, so now that I've depressed you about all the ways our poo can go out of balance, let's talk about what can you do? What can you do? Well, the first thing is to change your lifestyle, change your diet, change your stress patterns, get out of fight or flight. Fight or flight, overdrive, overwork, overdoing, I believe is one of the main reasons we're experiencing a lot of the gut issues. Of course, there are other outside reasons. For example, mineral health, soil health, gut microflora being out of balance. But what we can do is repopulate that flora with a good seasonal um, local uh, diet because that's going to be full of good flora and fauna for our gut bacteria. Um, Involve yourself in activities that get you outdoors and in the soil, gardening, um, walking barefoot, really, really good, breathing air in different um, in micro uh, or rather macrobiomes, breathing air in the mountains, in the ocean, out in the fields, in the forest, really great for actually breathing in the microflora for your gut. And I mean, I'm a big fan of being a part of a tribe, a group of people that are like-minded, which is why I love uh, what we do over here at Shakti School. It's, it's really so much more about the community that we're building rather than the content, although the content's awesome. So, like, how involved are you? And believe it or not, that has a dramatic effect on your elimination. How much touch are you getting and giving? Really, really big in terms of my elimination pattern. Have you ever noticed that like, if you have a good snuggle session with somebody, you may have pooforia the next day? Hmm, what's going on there? <laughs> and then let's talk about some really practical stuff. So I'm gonna give you guys some links for the products in the show notes that are specific to Vata, Pitta, and Kapha pooforic experiences. So we all need different herbs if you've got those different imbalances according to the doshic type. So if you were like, oh my God, she nailed it. It was me. Like I'm the vata imbalance. And by the way, remember that has nothing to do with your body type. It's just what you're experiencing. If you were that person that had those vata issues, you're going to want to take triphala. You're going to want to take triphala. If you're one of those people that, and you know, it's not the only one. I mean, if you're really extremely vata, castor oil, T teaspoon or two of castor oil before bed, that'll knock, knock it right out of you, <laughs> down and out to be specific. So um, vata, trifle is really good, uh, flax seeds, psyllium, 
castor oil is kind of like the big guns not to be used over time. What about pitta? Pitta does really well with aloe vera and amalaki. Amalaki is one of the ingredients in triphala. It's one of the plants, it's, it's a fruit actually that you dry and it's ground up and it has one of the highest vitamin C content on the planet. So, so pitta does really well with that because it's a cooling uh, plant. And kapha, guess what they get? They get triphala too. So triphala kaphas do really well with it. Now I could go on and on about herbs, but let's keep it simple. Try one of those if you have any of those issues and see how it goes for you. I hope that you have survived this rather earth-based talk on Puforia. I hope you find it really useful. And as always, I hope I get to see your shining, smiley face on our Zoom platform in next year's Ayurveda school. I'm sending you guys so much love, and I will see you next week. Put the pull